Hey guys, in this video, the wonderful Mr. B is going to be taking you through polynomials for your AS and your A-level maths. Now there are lots of examples here, work through slowly at three different levels. You can use the timestamps down below to jump between those levels and work through these at your own pace. Nobody is watching you, nobody is judging you. To go with this over my website, there are thousands more practice questions for your A-level maths which will really, really, really help you get secure in this skill. We are going to look at expanding brackets, starting with the really, really easy ones and gradually building our way up from a linear expansion like this one to cubic ones. Now, it's important to look at all of these at once and not just focus on, say, a cubic expansion, which is more difficult because it's very common for students to kind of remember one of the methods and forget how to do a linear expansion. So we'll look at that first. So we have four lots of 5x plus 8. Now, what this means is that we've got 5x plus 8 four times. So we can write that bracket out four times, add them all together, and that is the equivalent expression. Once we've done that, what we need to do is look at how many x's we've got. Now we've got 5x four times, so four times five will give us 20. So all together, that's gonna give us 20 lots of x. Then we'll look at the normal numbers. We've got eight, 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 and eight. We've got four lots of eight. Again, we've got that four on the outside of the brackets. So four lots of eight will give us 32. So the answer is 20x plus 32. Now, of course, you don't want to write out all the brackets each time. And you know, four is probably the limit of how many you want to write down. If it was say, you know, 12 lots of the bracket, you don't want to write it out to 12. But the common thing here was that we had four lots of the things inside the bracket. So the shortcut is you do four times five X, which was the 20 X. Then we do four times the eight, which was the 32. With linear expansions, you can also have two things outside the bracket. So here we have a two outside the bracket. So we're multiplying through by two, but we also have an X. So we'll multiply through by X as well. And we're multiplying those by six X plus five. So the trick here is have a look at the X first. I'm going to multiply through by the x. So x times 6x will give us 6x squared, and x times 5 will give us 5x. Watch the letter terms, so then look at the number. We've got a 2, and we just do the same thing with the 2. 2 times 6x will give us 12x, and 2 times 5 will give us 10. And then once you've done the expansion, just say, can I simplify any of these terms? So you're going to have a x squared term in this case, a 6x squared. We're going to have an x term. Now we've got two at the moment, 5x and 12x. 5x plus 12x is 17 lots of x. Then we've got a number term. We've got the 10 at the end. So 6x squared plus 17x plus 10 is our final answer. So the point of this, again, is you've got two things out of the brackets. Do each step separately, multiplying by the letter and then multiplying by the number. Now we can have more complicated things inside the brackets and we can have additional terms inside the brackets. This time we've got three terms. So we have seven lots of 2x squared plus 5x plus 5. So we take seven, multiply it by the 2x squared. So again, do the numbers first. Seven times two is 14. Then do the letters. We've got uh, no letters on the seven and we've got x squared in what we're multiplying by. So we write in x squared. After that multiplication, our next one will be seven times 5x. 7 times 5 is 35, and then we've got the x. And the last multiplication is 7 times the 5. 7 times 5 is 35. So even though we've got an extra term inside the brackets, and the letters look more complicated, we've got this x squared term, it's not actually more difficult to get your answer. It's just one extra multiplication if there's one extra term in the brackets. Factorizing is the same thing, but working backwards. And so we're working backwards. Expanding brackets involves multiplication. The factorization will involve division. What I want to say is, what can we divide 21x squared plus 3x by? And we can divide it by two things. Firstly, if we have a look at the numbers, we've got 21 and we've got 3. So you think, what can I divide both of those by? What's the highest common factor? The largest number you can divide both by is 3. 21 can divide by 3 and 3 can divide by 3. Then you look at the letters. We've got x squared and x. So what's the highest letter they can be divided by? And you can divide them both by x. You think about your laws of indices, x squared divided by x. So you would have, you could write it like this. And with your laws of indices, you know, you take away the powers and two take away one would give you one. x squared divided by x. Again, look at the powers, both power one. Take the powers away. 
and you get x to the power of 0, which is 1. So you can divide through both of the letters. So we can also put x on the outside. Now, once you've decided what number you can divide both through and what letter, then you can open up your brackets, and then you actually do the division. 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. Then x squared divided by x is x, and x divided by x is 1. So then that will leave us with 1 times 1, which is just 1. In the middle, got a positive sign, so let's make this positive. So the final answer is 3x multiplied by 7x plus 1 inside the brackets. An important step with factorization is you can use multiplying out the brackets afterwards to check you've got the correct answer. So if we take 3x, then our 7x plus 1, 3x times 7x, 3 times 7 is 21, x times x is x squared, and 3x times 1, times everything by 1, it stays the same. You can clearly see by multiplying out the brackets, we've got back to our original question. And so this is a really good way to check your answers. And if you did this and you didn't get back to the original question, then you know you've made a mistake. So we'll look at one more factorization. We've got 24x cubed plus 12xy. So the first thing to do is look at the numbers. We've got 24 and we've got 12. Now you can divide them both by all kinds of things. You can divide them both by two. You can divide them both by four. You can divide them both by three. What you want is the largest number you can divide them both by. And the largest number is going to be 12. They are both in the 12 times table. Then look at the letters. Now we've got three x's and we've got a one x and one y. So you think, well, what's common to both? Well, they've both got one x. So we move that to the outside. And then we actually do our division. So 24 divided by 12 is two. 12 divided by 12 will give us one. Then you look at your letters. If we've got x cubed, that's three x's multiplied together, and we divide one of them away, we're only going to be left with two x's. So that'll be x squared. If we've got 12xy, now we dealt with a 12. If we divide the x away, we're only going to be left with a y, and that will give us one y. Then just remember, with algebra, if it's one of the letter, we just write the letter itself. One y and y are the same thing. So just write y. The last thing to do once you've done this is expand the brackets and check your answer. So we had 12x and 2x squared plus y. So multiply 12x by 2x squared. 12 times 2 is 24. x and x squared will give us x cubed. Then multiply the second term. 12 times 1 will give us 12. Then look at the letters. We've got an x in the number we're dividing and a y in the number we're multiplying by. So we're going to have both the x from the first number and the y from the second number. And again, we've worked backwards and we've got back to our question, so we know we have the correct answer. Now, we're going to focus on factorising quadratics in a separate video. So here we're going to look at multiplying out quadratics. And by quadratic, we we'll mean something where we have kind of two brackets with an x in each. So what does a quadratic look like? Well, if we had uh, 4x minus 1 and 3x minus 1, we multiply in a similar way to how we do with a linear one. So we take the 4x and multiply it by the 3x. That will give us 12x squared. Then we take the 4x and we multiply it by the negative 1. That will give us negative 4x. So we multiply the first number in the first bracket by both the numbers in the second bracket. Now we look at the second number in the first bracket and we multiply the negative 1 by the 3x, the first number in the second bracket. It will give us negative 3x. And then we are going to multiply the negative 1 by the second number in the second bracket, which is another negative one. Negative one times negative one will be a positive one. So when you multiply a quadratic like this with two terms in each bracket, you're going to get an x squared term. That's why it's a quadratic. We've got a squared in here. All we need to do at the end is simplify. So we have our x squared term, 12x squared. We have our x term. Now we need to take away 4x and take away another 3x. That would be negative 7x. And then we've got our number term, which is 1. So our final answer is 12x squared minus 7x plus 1. So slowly moving on to more complicated examples. This one we're expanding negative 4x plus 9. And then this is squared. So what the squared symbol means is that we have two of the same bracket. And then we just multiply it like we did before. Negative 4x times negative 4x gives a positive 16x. Negative 4x times 9. Negative 4 times 9 will give us negative 36. So it'll be negative 36x. Then we do 9 times negative 4x, which is going to be another negative 36x. And then we're going to do 9 times 9, which is 81. If you find an answer, write down your x squared term, which was 16x squared. Simplify your two x terms. 
So negative 36 and another negative 36 would be negative 72x. And then write your number term, which was 81. So our final answer is 16x squared, take away 72, plus 81. Quadratics were made more difficult by having thirds in them. So in this question, we've got root 3 lots of x. Now we can write this in two different ways. We can write root 3 and then the x, or we can write the x and then root 3. Now the reason why I've written it x and then root 3 is because it could be possible to make a mistake We put the root symbol over the x as well, if you write the x afterwards. Whereas if you write the x first, then you can't accidentally extend the root symbol. But both of these are the same way, so it's probably easy to think of it as you've got root 3 lots of x. But I'll write it the other way around, so we don't make any mistakes. Now it's squared, so again that means I have two sets of that same bracket. And even though we've got a third in this, we've got the root symbol in this, we still do it the same way. So we do x root 3 multiplied by x root 3. Now root 3 times root 3 is root 9, and root 9 is 3. So if you multiply a third by itself, a number with a square root around it, it's going to cancel it out. Because essentially you're squaring a square root, they cancel out. So the number term will give us 3. Then we have x times x, which is x squared. Next we're going to do uh, x root 3 times negative 4. That's going to give us negative 4 lots of root 3 multiplied by x. Another way to kind of avoid the confusion where you can accidentally extend the symbol and make it look like something that it isn't, is you could put brackets around the kind of number section, which is the 4 root 3. Next we have another negative 4 times x root 3. So if you're multiplying a number by a root, just write them next to each other. Then our final one is negative 4 times negative 4, which will be a positive 16. So when we write our final answer, we have our x squared term, 3x squared. We have our x term now is taken away 4 root 3 twice. So 2 lots of 4 root 3 would be 8 root 3. And then that's being multiplied by x with a plus 16 on the end. Now we'll go through thirds in more detail in the thirds video. But basically treat that root 3 like an algebra letter. If that was a y and you had 4xy and another 4xy, you'd have 8xy. So again, just treating that root 3 like it's a letter. So our final answer is 3 lots of x squared. Take away 8 root 3 lots of x plus 16. Where quadratics can get even harder, that's when you've got two sets of quadratics being added together or taken away. So here we've got 7x plus 4. Now that's squared. We have two of this. I'm adding to it 7x minus 4. And that squared, we've got two lots of that. And so what we need to do is do each set of brackets separately. So we have 7x times 7x is 49x. 7x times 4 is 28x. And we have another 28x. And 4 times 4 is 16. That's our first bracket. Then we look at our second bracket. 7x times 7x will give us 49x squared. 7x times negative 4 will give us negative 28x. And we'll have two of those. And then negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. And then in the middle, we've got an add. So we're adding these together. All we need to do is add it all up. So 49 plus 49 is going to be 98, which is 98x squared. 28x take away 28x is going to be 0, and we're going to end up with 0 twice. So we have 0, there's no point writing it down, it's got no value, why write it? And then we've got 16 plus 16, which would give us 32. So our final answer is 98x squared plus 32. And what you find with questions like this, where it's kind of very similar uh, quadratics, especially the squared as well, is that you do get terms that cancel out like this. So the answer, while well, it's got quite large numbers of things like 98, there's not a lot of terms. We can also have combinations of these more complicated quadratics. So here we have one where we have two quadratics and we have thirds. First thing to do is write out the full version. So we have root 11 lots of x take away 3, and that's squared, so we have two of them. Then we're adding on to that. I'm going to write this further down so there's space to do working out. We have root 11 lots of x plus 3, and that's squared, so there's two of those. And again, all of this is going to be added together. So expand each set of brackets independently. So we're going to have root 11x multiplied by root 11x. Then if you multiply root by itself, you cancel out the root symbol. That's just going to give us 11x squared. Then we have root 11x multiplied by 3, which is going to give us 3 lots of root 11x. And it's negative 
And you might just want to group up the numbers in brackets there to show that both of those are being multiplied by the x. Then we've got another set of the negative 3 root 11 x. Then we've got negative 3 times negative 3, which will give us a positive 9. Then we do the second bracket. So again, we've got a root 11x multiplied by another root 11x, which we already know is 11x squared. Now we're going to multiply that by positive 3 this time. So it'll be the same answer as we had before, but this time it's going to be positive. And again, there's going to be two of those. Then we finish off with uh, 3 times 3 is 9. And so what you might notice here is the complicated bit is the x terms in the middle. But since one set is positive and one set is negative, they're going to cancel out. And they're going to cancel out to make zero. So all we're left with is a 2 11 x squared and the two nines, which all together will add up to 22 x squared plus 18. So a lot of questions like this look very complicated, but they're intentionally designed this way to have the complicated parts cancel each other out. So you're only left with a simple answer. The next we're going to look at are uh, cubics. Now, cubics is the same as quadratic, but rather than two brackets, you have three brackets. Now, the best thing to do with a cubic is to multiply the first two brackets first and get an answer. And once you get that answer, then multiply it by the third bracket. So you're only starting off with a quadratic, which will be fairly simple. So our first two brackets are x plus 4 and x minus 4. And if we multiply that out, we're going to get x squared, negative 4x, positive 4x, then 4 times negative 4, which is negative 16. So altogether, that gives us the x squared. The x terms cancel out because we've got a positive and negative 4. They make 0. And we've got the negative 16. So what we've done there is we've done the first two brackets. But we haven't done the third bracket. So then we bring down our answer, the x squared minus 16. And we're going to multiply all of that by the third bracket, x plus 2. And now we take into account all three brackets. But we have to multiply it out. Again, this will work like a quadratic. So we have x squared times x, which will be x cubed. Then x squared times 2, which will be 2x squared. Negative 16 times x will be negative 16x. And negative 16 times 2 will be negative 32. And when you expand the cubic, you'll usually get four terms. Or you can think of it as you always get four times, uh, four terms. If you end up with less, it might be that one of them is zero. Moving on to a more complicated cubic, and again, we're going to work out the first two brackets, get an answer, and then work out the third bracket. So the first two brackets will give us 2x plus 2 and 3x plus 2. So multiplying that out, we're going to end up with 6x squared, 4x, 6x, and 4. And the middle two terms can simplify, giving us 6x squared plus 10x plus 4. So that's the first two brackets dealt with. Now to with the final bracket, write down your number. 6x squared plus 10x plus 4. And we're going to multiply that by the final bracket, which is 2x plus 3. And we're going to multiply this out. So 6x squared times 2x will give us 12x cubed. 6x squared times 3 will give us 18x squared. Then we move on to our second term. 10x times 2x is going to give us 20x squared. And let's notice how I'm lining up uh, the same kind of terms. They'll be simplified later. 10x times 3 will give us 30x. And now we have to move on to our third number. So we've got 4 times 2x, which will be 8x. And 4 times 3 will be 12. All that's left for the final answer is to add all of that together and make a single expression. So our x cubed term will be 12x cubed. Our squared term is 18 plus 20. That's 38x squared. Our x term is 30 plus 8, which is 38x. Then our whole number term is going to be 12 at the end. And so there's our final answer. So again, when you're expanding three sets of brackets, treat that quadratic, expand two sets, get an answer, and then turn that into a bracket to multiply by the third one. So we're essentially expanding double brackets twice to expand three brackets. Now, in working backwards and factorising cubics, there are some quite complicated methods. What we're going to do here is look at a simpler method, which is using our expanding bracket skills to factorise. Now, sometimes you might be given clues. So, for example, x cubed, take away 2x squared, take away x plus 2, has two factors. It has x minus 1 and x plus 1. So it's given us the first part of our brackets. So let's write down what we have. It's cubed, so it's a cubic, our first term. That means we must have three brackets for a cubic. Because we know when we expand the brackets, we end up doing an x times an x 
times in x to get x cubed. Now we've been told that we have negative one and positive one into the brackets. So all we're trying to do here is figure out what the final one is. Now there's a really easy way to do this when you're given two clues, and that is the first number is the first number in the brackets multiplied together. The final number is the second number in the brackets multiplied together. And then the middle two terms are when you get a mix of numbers and letters multiplying together. But your first term is all the letters multiplied together, and your final term is all the numbers multiplied together. So we can get almost form a little equation here, and we can say that negative one multiplied by positive one multiplied by a missing number is equal to two. So we have to take into account two things. The first thing is the number itself. One times one times something is two. Well, the only possible number it could be is two. That's the only way you get that number two involved. The next thing to consider is the sign. A negative times a positive times something will give us a positive two. Now, with what we've got so far, negative times a positive, it'll give us a negative. So we need to multiply by another negative to cancel it out. That tells us that our last factor, our last bracket, must be a negative two. So we're using the logic of multiplying brackets out to factorize, as long as we're given clues. So looking at another example like this, this one's more complicated. We've got six x cubed plus x squared minus five x minus two. So because it's cubed, we know there's going to have to be three brackets. That's our first clue. The next clue is that all of the first numbers in our bracket have to multiply together to make the first term, which is a six x cubed. Now we've been told that the first two are two x and one x. It's gonna be x cubed, we know that the third one is also gonna have an x. But two x times x times x isn't gonna give us six x cubed, it'll give us two x cubed. So again, we can form a little equation for this. Two x multiplied by x multiplied by something should be giving us three x cubed. So we know we need an x to get the letters right, so we've got three x's. What about the numbers? Well, two times one is two. We need to multiply by three to get three x squared. So that means that our third one must be a three. Then we can do the same thing with the numbers. The second term in each bracket has to multiply together to make the final term in the expanded cubic. Again, we've been given clues. The first one is a one and the second one is a negative one. So we can form a little equation again. A positive one multiplied by a negative one multiplied by something must make a negative two. So think about the numbers first. One times one is one. We want to get two. So we've got to multiply by two to get two. Then think about the signs. We've got a positive times a negative. That gives us a negative. And we actually want a negative two. So we're actually we're okay with that. So if your symbol's fine already, then you're just going to need a positive in there. It was a negative, the double negative cancel out and be positive. So it's got to be positive. And now we've found our third factor. It's 3x plus 2. And now we have a completed uh, factorization. And again, all we did was use a logic of expansion. We know that when we expand the brackets, the first term is the first term in the brackets multiplied together, and the fourth term is the second term in the brackets multiplied together. Middle two terms are more complicated. They're a mix. So we don't quite need to look at those at the moment. Our final example is 3x cubed, take away 5x squared, take away 16x plus 12. Now again, this is a cubic one x cubed term. So we know there's going to have to be three brackets. We've been given a clue for the first one, it's 3x minus two. So let's think about the x terms first. So to get 3x cubed, that's gonna be the first term of each bracket multiplied together. We want to get 3x cubed. Now let's look at the numbers first. We want to get a 3 in our answer. Well, we've already got the 3 sorted out. So that means the rest of these are going to be a 1. Then let's look at the letter. We want x cubed, we want 3x's. So we definitely need an x in both brackets. So we need 1x in the other two brackets. And that's it. Those three things will multiply out to give us 3x cubed. So we've dealt with the x term. Now we need to look at the number term. It's a positive 12. And we've only got 2 as a clue. That means there's going to be a few options for us here. So let's think about these options. We could have uh, two 
times, let's think about the factors to 12, uh, 12 be one times 12. So that would have to be uh, one times six, wouldn't it? Because we've already got a, a two involved there. One uh, times six times two will give us 12. What other factors of 12 could be used? Well, we could have uh, three times four will give us 12. Again, we already have the two involved, so we have to half one of these. Well, we can half the four. So we could have two times three times two. That will give us 12 as well. And then we're going to have various combinations of positives and negatives. Now, if the two is negative, then either the one or the six or the three or the two are going to be um, negative as well. That leaves us with four possibilities for our factorization. Now, each possibility is going to have the 3x minus 2. So the first possibility was when we had uh, the 1 and the 6. So we could have x plus 1 and x minus 6, or we could have x minus 1 and x plus 6. So we know it's 1 and 6 potentially, but the signs could be the other way around. The other option was uh, 2 and 3. So we could have x plus 2 and x minus 3, or we could have x minus 2 and x plus 3. So all four of these options are going to give us 3x cubed when we multiply them out, and they'll give us a positive 12 when we multiply them out. The question is, which one of these is going to give us a negative 5x squared and the negative 16? So one way you could figure out which alternative is going to be is just to expand all three sets and see which one actually gives their answer. Now this is the back method, it's going to be a lot of work, and there is a faster method. So the faster method is using algebraic long division, but that's a much harder topic, so we'll have an entire video just for that. But let's have a look at this kind of bad method first, because you could use this add a push if you forget the other methods. So firstly, let's expand the first two brackets in all four possibilities. And then once you multiply the first two brackets, then multiply what you have by the third bracket. And then once you've done those multiplications, think about which one is going to give us the negative 5x squared, for example. And if you look through the four possibilities, only one of you, one of them gives that. And that's the one where, when you start to simplify, you've got the negative 9x squared plus the 4x. That'll give us a negative 5x squared. You can also look for the negative 16 next to it. And we've got negative 4 and negative 12 will give us a negative 16. Now, all the other alternatives don't give us at those two values, it gives us different values. So we can identify that the third option is actually the correct one. And now we can write down our final answer. The factorization is 3x minus 2, x plus 2, and x minus 3. But what we need to do now is move on to algebraic long division, which will be a much better way of doing this without having to expand four different cubics to get the answer. So we need to move on now to a better.